Goodness this, you guys. Oh, this laptop. I tell you, I got a new one. I got to go get this thing maintenanced. Yeah. You guys are back in Oregon now, it looks like. Yes. I thought you were just in Phoenix, weren't you? We were. We were in Phoenix and we were in Texas and yeah. <laughs> nice. You guys are doing deals all over. Yeah. We just finished up a project in Texarkana. And so we actually decided to fly out. We liked our contractors so much that we decided to fly out and meet them personally. And we might do some marketing in Texarkana and pick up. We're actually um, looking at picking up some additional products or pro projects with those same, that same construction team. Nice. Oh, that's great. So, uh, well, yeah. Any deals back in Oregon or are you all remote now? Um, we have not done any deals in Oregon for like two years. Has it been two years? <laughs> no, last year. But did one last year? I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah. Mostly nice. remote. But you guys just like traveling anyways. It we do. We really do. <laughs> I have to see all the photos on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we don't like holding properties in Oregon anyways. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not very friendly to landlords, is it? Not very friendly for landlords. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys, do you guys still have uh, lease options uh, going on or in, in mm -hmm. Oregon mm -hmm. right now? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Any we've got two that are actually trying to cash us out this year. Do yeah, you know, we we cashed one out earlier this year in te, in uh, Florida, Florida, yeah. and then we've got two here locally in Oregon actually that are trying to get us cashed out this year. So nice. big paydays. Yeah, I mean they're decent, but I mean a lot of it. The one of them that's trying to get it done right now, they um we've uh, we coll we we collected a pretty large option deposit from them, so we don't have a lot of back end profit because we got it up front. Yeah, that's always good. Yeah, I've got a, a couple uh, tenant buyers going to cash out here in the next 60 to 90 days. Their option expired like last year. Oh, wow. So now we're at market price. Oh, it's, yeah. It's going to be huge. <laughs> nice. I love that. Yeah. Hey, so just I have a quick question for you since we're talking about this. Yeah. This particular lease buyer, they're actually kind of having some troubles getting their financing done. And so he actually literally just called me this morning and asked me if we would be open to allowing him to sell the house himself. What do you, what have you done in that kind of circumstance? Have you had you any know, of that? Yeah, we've never had a tenant buyer do that, but that is an idea I have come up with for the tenant buyers who, you know, they like, they get in trouble. They're about to lose the house. I don't want them to lose the house. And, you know, we try to explain to them, look, you can go sell this, even though you don't haven't bought it from us yet, you can go sell it. But they never do that. Now, this guy, it's his idea. Maybe he'll actually follow through. So how do they sell it when they don't technically own it yet? They only have an option contract. Well, just the same way you would sell it. They, they'd end up doing a double close. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what Jim would have mentioned. So he does have the option of you, hey, you can market, do a double close. Yeah. What they don't have the option to do is to list it on the MLS because they don't have ownership. Yeah, unless you, you know, give them permission or, you know, whatever, which maybe that's fine. But he, you know, the, the commission is going to come out of his cut. You know what I mean? So here's what but I was thinking. But then he makes all the profit because that, that the market here is, I mean, it's like hot, hot, right. hot, right? So then like we give him the opportunity to make that profit. Here was my thought, Blair. My thought was he could have two choices. It, now, he's not in any jeopardy of losing his, his uh, he's still got 18 months or something on his contract. They just, he foresees that the market, he's worried that the market may change. And so he's like, hey, you know, if I'm not able to get my financing, like right now, like I think I am, and it's going to be another year or so before I can get qualified, it, we may have a market change and I don't want to be in jeopardy of losing. I'd rather sell while the market's hot, take yeah. my, get my money back and then just go figure something else out. And I'm yeah. like, hey, look, I understand. Yeah, he's smart. So here's the situation. You can market it yourself and try to get it sold. And, and then you can have whatever up and above our option agreement that you can make from, from marketing it your, with your own ways. Or the other option is we put it for sale and we just give you your option deposit back when we close. And... Um, and then we take whatever's left over after the why would he? Why would he take that second option? That would be silly. Well, because what if, because he, the reason he might take that is because, well, he's guaranteed the 20 grand back that he gave us. And he has, he has much larger gains to, but we give him, <laughs> but we give him a short period of time. We don't give him a year to sell it on his own. I give him like 60 or 90 days to sell it on his own. If not, we're going to put it for sale. Well, well he has, he, 
Yeah, or he can options, actually, or, he, or you he can can't actually, just, you can't just say, I'm going to put it for sale. No, no, no. I mean, like, that's his two options. We can either sell it for him through a realtor if he's, if he's worried about losing his money. So yeah. what you do is you just allow them to go ahead and try to sell it on their own. Yeah, but nobody ever has. Because, you know, they, I don't know why they don't think like that, but they don't. But this guy is, which I think is smart for him. Well, he's, he is an investor as well. Okay. So I think that's why he thinks like that. He's got a little bit more of an investor yeah. mindset than, than your traditional tenant buyer. Do you think it makes sense for us to, to allow him to use the MLS or? Why not? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind. Now, what are the, like, we don't need all the numbers, but let's say he sold it at retail price. You know, what does he stand to make above his option price with you guys? Honestly, I don't think much because he, because he, his option price is 289 and it's maybe worth 325. So he's going to have 20 or 30 grand in realtor commissions. So he might make 10 or 20. Yeah, he might make 10 or 15 grand up and above what he's paid us already. And then what would you guys stand to make? on the back end once he cashes you out at his option price? I think we have 18 or so grand left, Probably 15 or 18 grand less left. Less than 20,000 left. So, I mean, it, it's about the same. Yeah, right. it really is. And and then, I mean, let, let him take on that hassle of trying to sell it. Yeah. Well, if we sold it on our own and just gave him his 20 grand back, we would stand to make 30 or 40 more. Well, but he's going to get the, the profit plus the equity he has, that 20 grand he gave you. So he'll get close to 40. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, he personally, if it were me, I would let him do his thing because mm -hmm. he's going to go do all the work and I ain't got to worry about it. And I'm going to get cash. Anyway. Right. Plus, you know, he has the option for another 18 months, you said. He yeah. does. Yeah. So I think, yeah, just giving him a fair shot to do, do what he can do. Now, the realtors will need uh, like when they sign a contract with him because he doesn't own the property. Would we would we just have to sign an like, is there some sort of an addendum that we sign that allows him? Well, I mean, the realtor will tell you what, what she needs for that. Um, I would almost guarantee that you will need to sign something for the realtor because you're the owners. Maybe right. all it is is saying, you know, you give this guy the right to list it because he has an option on it. The other thing, though, is once the realtor finds a buyer, they're prob I mean, you could do the whole double close thing, but since everybody knows everybody here and everybody knows what's going on, like, you know, um, the realtor is going to go find a buyer and probably just send the purchase contract to you guys to sign. Yeah. You guys are going to sell to the end buyer and then he's going to get his cut paid out at closing. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. I think we can just work it out to make it simple and easy for everyone. Yeah. And quite frankly, he could probably just list it himself and try to do for sale by owner and save, yeah. save himself the commissions. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe once in this market, that. cause it's just, you know, so yeah, we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. I'd, t I'd encourage him just to do a flat fee listing and that yeah. way he gets MLS access. He doesn't have to pay the other two and a half or 3%. He's mm -hmm. going to get just as many buyers <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do that then. That's cool. Yeah. So tell us about this uh, recent subtail deal you guys did. This was in Phoenix area or no, where was it? No, this one was actually, um, it was in a little tiny town called Humboldt, yeah. Kansas, nice. to about 3,000 people, not very many. Okay, and how'd you find the lead? It came through on our Facebook marketing. So, and it was a, it was a follow-up um, lead. So we, we've got some pretty, pretty aggressive follow-up processes in place. And so we had kept following up on this lead. And I think it was probably, I don't know, four months before we finally got the deal. Yeah, probably somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, we... We purchased it subject to their existing mortgage for forty two five. Um, actually, we're, our purchase price was forty two thousand five hundred. We purchased it subject to their existing mortgage, and we gave them six thousand down. So that total purchase minus the six thousand was their mortgage balance. Oh, okay, gotcha. So yeah, like, uh, thirty six. Yep. thirty six thousand was yeah. about the mortgage. Yeah, balance. they owed about thirty. Yeah, they owed about thirty six five or so. They Never needed. Take. They needed the six grand. And they needed it quickly because they had already um, gotten under house. contract to buy another home there in town and they were to the wire and they're like, we're going to lose our money if, or we're going to lose this opportunity, but we need the six grand for the down payment to close. And we negotiated as, as 
you know, Low as tight as we could. And, and that's what they needed. So we knew that there was quite a bit of equity left in this thing. It wasn't a huge deal. You know, nobody's, nobody's retiring on these kind of small deals in Kansas, but it was a cool deal that we were able to get into for a pretty small amount of money out of pocket. Yeah. Um, and we were able to, and the house didn't need a ton of work. We did, we did a pretty light interior rehab on this thing. And then we were able just to relist it. Just paint and carpet or what? We did a, we did a yeah. kit, we did some kitchen work. Yeah, mm -hmm. we put in, um, I mean, just mainly paint, carpet, flooring, or excuse me, um, a little bit of like kitchen work. Um, did some we did new countertops, but mo all cosmetic. We did some outside cleanup, some, you know, they, they fixed a fence. Fixed a, yeah, a fence that was falling down. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, minor stuff. So we, our rehab cost was about 12,000. Uh, 500 total yeah. for our rehab costs and then after our holding costs and realtor commissions we did hire a realtor um, mm -hmm. to sell the house for us and she was a pretty seasoned vet in that area in fact every listing that we saw in the area was hers <laughs> so yeah, that's that's why we decided to use like, her it yeah. looked like she was pretty much doing everything in town want. so yeah I mean because again it's a small town and she's the one that recommended the contractor and so we had developed a pretty good relationship with the contractor right off the bat he got in there. He did all the work before we even had to pay him. Nice. He didn't ask for any money. Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. So we, we didn't even pay our contractor until the project was complete. We tried. We tried to pay him. We offered him like monthly. So usually we try to do like weekly draws with our contractors in good faith, you know. Um, but he was like, no, I'll just, I'll bill you when I'm done. I'm like, yeah. We did pay okay. for supplies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you have to order the supplies or? There was a local, which is kind of crazy because like most places, you know, right now, especially we've got some projects going and finding supplies has actually been proven to be quite difficult. And <laughs> so we got lucky in this little town. Of course, we didn't have to do anything super major, but in this little town and surrounding, um, we, uh, we were able to find everything uh, we needed. We did have to go to a Lowe's that was about two hours away and buy some of the things that he needed like countertops, but they, um, they delivered them to this little town. Nice. And so between the lumber or the lumber yard supply store that was in town there where we could get, you know, the little supplies that he needed and the Lowe's where we got the bigger stuff delivered, we were able to get him everything he needed to complete the project in a pretty time. I think we yeah. got the project done in about 40 days, 45 days. Oh, yeah. yeah, and he and he would just go down and get everything and then call us and we would pay over the phone. So it was kind of nice because we yeah. would just put that expense on our credit card and earn points, you know. Yeah, yeah. Points. <laughs> Which so, paid for our plane ticket to Phoenix. Yeah. yeah there you go. And Vegas. <laughs> yeah, we love points, man. We love we love utilizing our points because yeah. I think all of our almost all of our travel has been comped by our our points oh, yeah. on credit cards. Yeah. So what was so, the, um, when, when you got into the deal, what was the expected uh, exit plan and profit and the numbers there, the ARV and all that sort of thing? So when I looked at the numbers, I always look at, you know, multiple ways we might be able to exit this project because sometimes you think it's going to happen a certain way and, it, and, and something changes along the way in the deal and you go, hey, look, now I got to exit somewhere different. So mm -hmm. we looked at this as a, a lease option. We looked at it as a rental and what the ROI would be if we held it long term, and we looked at it as a you know a subtail like a re like we'd retail out of it. And what we decided was because we were going to have six grand out of pocket up front, plus closing costs, and we were going to have the rehab up front, we didn't want to hold this one long term because it would take a long time to get our twenty grand back. And so even though the, and the re rents weren't and the rents were low in this area, yeah. And it was a small area. It's a so, small area, a small population. And so, you know, it limits your, your pool. So we decided that retailing was going to be our, our number, what was our plan A. Plan yeah. B, we could, you know, we could collect five or eight grand or 10 grand from a lease option tenant and put them in and then collect, because our payment was only like 300 bucks a month on this property plus taxes and insurance. Yeah, so we really could have. We, we definitely would have had some decent cash flow. Could have made 300 bucks or so a month on cash flow, 350 in this area. But uh, we would have liked to have gotten our money back and put a little bit of jack in our pocket and move on to the next deal. Yeah. So, so that's what we decided we to do. We felt like we were pretty safe either way. So, yeah. us, you know. Yeah, for sure. It sounds like it. What, what, what did you expect the ARV to be when you bought about, it? About 90 to 95 grand. 
Okay. And then our realtor came to us once it was done and she said, Hey, I think we can maybe sell this for 105. Okay. And so we listed it at um, right a little over, I think we listed it at 105. We got an offer right away at 85 and we opted not to take it because um, it, it was just seemed, seemed too low at the time. You know, we were pretty confident in what our realtor said. Um, and so then though, it sat and we didn't get any offers for well like, and it was um it was the time of year too like they got a was this oh it was they february got a or was a ton uh, of snow right well no that was while we were working on it um we had a bunch of we had some bad weather like a ton of rain and some stuff like that which kind of limited our viewings but um we didn't get the activity on it that we thought we were going to and so you know lo and behold we did come up with an offer that was better than the original one but sometimes sometimes you're better just to take the first offer and and be done quicker and get out of it but anyways i think it took about you know 60 days or so for us to get this offer to close we about 45 days for the second offer to come in gotcha. at 89,000 and that's what we decided to take the offer on 89 yeah that's gotcha. So 89, we'll call it 90 for round numbers, minus you're in at 42 plus mm -hmm. 15, 12 to 15 rehab. So mm -hmm. you end up, your profit, how did that come out? So our, our net profit after everything, after holding costs, realtor costs, down, um, uh, um, per, rehab costs, everything, we profit, our net profit was about 25,000, just under 25,000. Nice. That's awesome, guys. So, <laughs> and I, I mean, saw the the wire on that, uh, that you guys posted in the group. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. What, yeah. So, I mean, it's a small deal. It's not, it's, it's the, probably the smallest flip that we've ever done in yeah. terms of profit, but in terms of, of cash outlay, it's still a pretty nice deal because, you know, we always want to make at least a hundred percent of what okay. we had to put, I mean, at minimum. So yeah. of what we had yeah. to put out. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Well, what did you guys learn from this one? You know, we always learn some little thing from each deal, right? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, this was a, this was in a really small area. And so rural areas, um, you don't have as much data to go off of. Mm -hmm. You don't have as many realtors to choose from. You don't have as many people to choose from. So in the rural areas, um, it, I think it can be a little bit more difficult. And so, um, I'd say, you know, we probably, I think my, my original ARV was really good. I think my original ARV was right on the money. Um, so on this one, the only thing that, uh, I think that we probably should have went with our, our original ARV and not listed it as high as we did to start with overvalue. We listed it overvalue. And I think sometimes when that, when a house just sits on the market like that, that can deter people for whatever reasons, like psychologically, they're just like, well, why is it sitting? It's, you yeah. know, what's wrong with it type of yeah. thing. So, so the realtor was a little optimistic. I think she the was realtor optimistic. was very optimistic. And then the one thing that I, and I don't know because I don't have anything to, to base this on, but we had made the decision to leave the kitchen cabinets as is, and they were, mm. in my opinion, hideous. Um, and so I felt like, you know, that was a pretty, that would have been a pretty, it would have probably cost us a, a couple extra thousand dollars to redo the Just kitchen. Just reface the cabinets. Reface that's all. the kitchen cabinets. Mm, yeah. And I, I honestly, in my opinion, I think it would have made a difference uh, yeah. because the kitchen to me is the most, one of the most important aspects of a house as a woman who's, you know, yeah. I think that's what women look at is the kitchen. Um, so I believe in my heart of hearts that had we refaced those cabinets and they would have looked a lot prettier because the house was very, very cute. I mean, it's a really cute house. The layout of it was perfect as a huge lot, really neat house. So I honestly think it was the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys put new countertops on, you said, right? We put did. countertops, but they had these, these kind of these weird looking um, wood grain veneered um, cabinets uh, and, and they were like, up like like they were a not a wallpaper but like a veneer that went over the cabinets and made them look like a they were updated but they I can were, show them to you if you want to but um they were updated but they were not very nice looking we would have been better off just to sit you know peel the veneer off sand them down paint them white and be yeah. done with it 
Yeah. I think so. And so Jim and the realtor both, uh, Jim had talked to the original a realtor originally. And he's like, well, what do you think about these cabinets? And she's like, oh, no, they're fine. You know, in these small towns, they're sort of behind the trends, right? And so we're like, okay, well, maybe they like this sort of look, you know, in this town. I don't know. So we kind of went with that thought process to begin with. But the more I put thought into it, I was like, I think it's these cabinets yeah. <laughs> that are keeping us from selling this house. I just, I can't get past these cabinets. And quite frankly, I don't even want to like show people these pictures because I'm embarrassed. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I hear you. All in all, I think the deal went really good. I mean, I think there's just a couple little things that we, you know, can take into our next deals. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like those little things, just yeah. be aware that in a small town, you're going to have a harder time finding supplies, a harder time finding contractors and a harder time, you know, getting the right data so you can really get a, um, a firm grasp on, on ARV. But, you know, we're in a good market right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that really helped, like you have a little bit of leeway when you're in a great seller's market to make some of these little mistakes. But I think going forward, you know, as the market changes back to like a neutral market or whatever, you're really going to want to pay attention to these little nuances like cabinets and stuff like that and spend a little bit of extra because you're not going to have the FOMO from people that can't find a house anywhere else. And they just choose yours. Like they're going to be more picky. So yeah. we're going to, we're going to take that going yeah. into the future as the market changes a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of uh, future and, and future deals, you guys got another one. I think Don, you were mentioning you got another one coming up. Um, a, a flip that we're closing on. I think so. Yeah. We've got one in Texarkana that we purchased and we actually purchased that one. Um, with private money. So it's completely 100% funded. In fact, we've got three lenders on this one project. Oh. Um, we've got the the original private lender that funded the purchase at 70,000. Mm -hmm. And then we did uh, two private lenders that actually teamed up on a partnership agreement with each other. And mm -hmm. they funded our rehab. They pooled their money together for the rehab. Yeah. Nice. So, so none of the cash completely... in it? Huh? None with of your own cash in it? No Zero. cash of no, our nice. own in this project at all. So we just completed the rehab. Um, they did a really good job on this house in Texarkana. And yeah. so we listed it and we got our first offer same day over asking. And we accepted yeah. that offer. It's like five grand over asking. So, um, you know, it's, but it's in a small area as well. It's a, yeah, it's in a, it's a smaller, not nearly as small as the, the other one but it is in a smaller market i mean it's a, it's, it's a still a pretty it's good size. Canada, it's a decent yeah it's a good size area yeah. um but the only thing that prevented us from getting even more offers on this house multiple offers is it didn't have a garage and that was oh. the biggest it was a garage conversion house yeah gotcha you know so you in garage conversion good. houses you get you get more square footage but you lose the garage and i think that you know, depending on the size of the house, I think people would probably choose a garage and parking over an extra large mm -hmm. laundry room or an extra large family room. Yeah, yeah. I got but you. it's on a huge lot. It has RV access to the back of the mm -hmm. house. So someone could build a shop if they wanted to. So yeah. I think that might be what's going to happen with this this buyer that we accepted. So we're close to we're close to the finish line on that one. I think we got two or three weeks before closing on that one. And then we have a rehab that we're dead right in the middle of um, yeah. in uh, Carlsbad, New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been through Carlsbad. And that one, my friend, we all have to do a Zoom on that one because that one is, we've had all kinds of challenges on that one. Oh my gosh. You guys like fixing them up, don't you? <laughs> um, I try to do it as just, well. You know, it just, it not, I mean, it just sort of worked out with these particular deals well, that these it just were made cash. more sense. These were cash deals mm -hmm. and that we couldn't get them on term. These, these two that we were just talking about were, not terms deals. And so we, you know, we didn't have a ton of options unless we wanted to go out and finance them in our own name. So these ones just happened to work. They both had pretty good equity spreads. You know, yeah. they will be anywhere from net 50 to 75 grand on oh, hey, that's worth both it, of those. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And, that's and we got private funding on that. The second one too, in, um, that one's hundred percent New Mexico. As well. We found a private lender. In fact, What's funny about that private lender is he reached out to us about your program. What? Yeah. You told him to join, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, so we ended up developing a relationship with him and um, he funded the entire project, the nice. rehab and purchase. Oh, that's great. So. You're cashing that one too. 
Huh? Zero. Zero. No cash. That's awesome. Yeah. The only thing that's challenging about that one is again, it's a, it's a small market. And, mm -hmm. but what we're having big challenges with is materials, getting materials to the, to the town and then finding, mm -hmm. being able to find materials like windows, a little back. The cool yeah. thing about this project is it has a, it's a three bedroom, two bath front unit and then a one bedroom uh one bath back unit so it's got a little casita in the back nice. and it's a huge lot so it's a really yeah. neat piece of property yeah but um the back house needed windows we couldn't find the size of windows that we needed and yeah it's just been a little bit of a nightmare with materials yeah i hope that uh, gets smoother as we go on through 2021 here yeah yeah i think we will but the good news about these is we have been able to find the right kind of team. We've been able to find good realtors and we've been able to find good contractors that we're having really good communication with. These guys were doing weekly draws yeah. um, and just paying them time and time and materials basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, um, yeah. nice. And, and Jim, you know, knowing the trade, that's super helpful. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would recommend people doing flips out of state virtually unless they have some idea of what's happening you know, and being able to communicate with the contractors and knowing somewhat about the trade. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that's cool. You guys just pay time and materials. On this project, yeah, this one was a, he bid the job, but then um, the bid was pretty excessive. And so we, we kind of went back and tried to renegotiate with him. And we found that maybe we could buy some of the supplies that would save him from having to go shopping. And then he would just charge us time and material because he was able to sub a lot of the work out to his crew or a hey sub. And so, yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to work out pretty good. Nice. We've had, yeah, the, like I said, we should do another Zoom on this when we get done with it. And yeah. because there's been some pretty interesting things that we've learned on this one yeah. so far. <laughs> you guys going to go down to Carlsbad too? Probably not. I don't think we will on this one. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, the contractors are great, but um, I don't know that we're excited to do any more jobs in Carlsbad just because of the challenges that we've yeah. had. Yeah. So, but Texarkana, I would like to do some more projects in Texarkana because we yeah. had really good luck with these guys, and there's there's lots of um, resources for materials and whatnot in yeah. that area. Yeah. I tell you, uh, any house I'm fixing up, the contractor is the maker or breaker on that. Oh, thing. it certainly is. You know. And these guys are great because they're these contractors are um, they're they're three guys that partnered together, and they've been in this town. I mean, Jason or uh, Matt has been like, sees, he's been in this town for I think like 40 years, all of them or so. Yeah, they know everyone. They know, you know what I mean? They have all the connections for anything that you need. And that's what we really, really like. Yes. Yeah. I've used the guy recently. What I realized about this guy is that he is more interested in protecting his good reputation in the community. That's than them too. Brewing mm -hmm. me over to make an extra buck. Yep. You know what I mean? So that yeah. I think goes a long way. Yeah, they were awesome. I mean, they, yeah, they cut, they did not cut any corners and, and they would go above and beyond and just not even like, there was certain things like when you tore the countertops off, cause I had decided again, I'm learning. I'm like, okay, we were going to leave the countertops because Jim and the realtor thought they were okay. And I was like, I don't think so. Those are <laughs> ugly. We are not leaving those countertops. Yeah. Look, I do not have <laughs> queer eye for the straight guy. Okay. I do not, I don't have, I can't, I don't have the vision. Yeah. You know? you like, like, Man, those countertops are awesome. And she's like, uh. They were maroon. Yeah. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, okay. then I, so, I'm in trouble. Anyway, so we decided to tear the countertops off. But when the contractors tore it, when he tore the countertops off, there was no framing. It was like literally, it, there was just no good framing for these countertops. So he had to rebuild the entire thing and they, he didn't charge us for that. Wow. Things like that because he, yeah, he just yeah. wanted it to be because he wanted it to be done right. Yeah. But he didn't want to like he knew that our budget was, you know, a little bit tighter than it needed to be. And so anyways, yeah. it was they were awesome. Yeah. So we went, good. it was really fun because we went to Texas. We took all three of them and their wives out to dinner and treated them to dinner. So it was really nice. Fun. I love yeah. that. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, I appreciate you guys sharing this. Uh, I mean, to anybody who's like, you know, kind of new to the business, what kind of advice would you give them? I know we, we covered a lot of ground here, um, you know, but just in getting started doing deals. I mean, obviously, this is not your first deal. And maybe you probably would not have done this kind of deal or any of these deals when you were first starting out, because now you've got more experience and that sort of thing. So, you know, to somebody who's just getting into the business, what would you tell them? Like, you know, how, how has your journey been so far? 
ahead. Um, I, I would say just always like, just continue to take action all the time. You know, you've got to be on the phone, you, finding sellers and getting on the, and just talking to sellers is the number one, most important part, not figuring out how to build your LLC, not figuring out how to protect your taxes and do all that kind of stuff and not figuring out how to build a buyer's list. None of that stuff matters if you don't have a deal. So you got to get a deal. And when it comes to creative deals there, it's, it's creative. It's, it's whatever you can figure out, whatever you can agree on with the person. And so if you can't think of something, then just keep the dialogue open with the seller as much as you can and go to somebody like you, Blair, or Jeff, or us, or somebody that has some more experience and say, man, what can I, how can I make this a deal, mm -hmm. right? Now, sometimes it's just not a deal. But if you can find out from somebody, they're going to have ideas that you don't have. And then you just go back to the seller and you just figure it out. But most importantly, it's like, you figure out what the seller needs, you know, build out in this situation, we were able to get through and build the rapport enough to find out exactly what they needed the, the money for. So we were able to structure the deal around that. Yep. Um, so, so that was helpful, but yeah, I mean, just, I agree. I think the whole, I think just the follow-up, 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 I mean, just build that rapport and keep following up with these people because I'd say 90% of the deals we get literally at least 80 minimum is follow-up. We, yeah. we don't get very many deals on the first call. It's, it's definitely follow-up. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool. Well, I appreciate you guys sharing that. Anything else you want to leave our viewers with? Gosh, um, <laughs> the market is changing. And so I'm not sure who's seeing this, but for the last couple of years, it's obviously been a seller's market. It's been a little bit more difficult um, than to find motivated sellers that you can buy properties from. Um, this way with creative terms or even with cash, because there's just so much cash flying around in the retail market. But right now and the last two years or so, but if you're just getting started right now is the best time to sharpen your skills because when the market goes back to neutral or oh, when it goes back to We're a buyer's so market, I mean, literally these people are going to need our help like crazy. And so sharpen your skills, get on the meetings, get on the Facebook groups, um, listen and learn, write notes, like, and get out there and make calls and fail. Like, you know how many times I fail every single day? A lot. So, <laughs> and that's the only way you can get better. So just keep yeah. screwing up these calls so that you can learn and get better and just, just, you know, take major action right now so that when the time, when, when it gets easier for us as, as buyers, it's going to be really, really profitable. Heck Yeah. Yeah, we've had a lot of like failed forwards though, which has been good. We're just failing our way forward. Yeah, that's the name of the game, literally. And we, and we have like a lot of, oh, woulda, shoulda, coulda type yeah. of scenarios, you know, like we do things sometimes out of fear. Like we had a house that we had deeded back to the sellers because we were fearful. And then the market just went bonkers. And so we could have made so much more money on that deal had we not let fear paralyze us. And yeah. so luckily we've been really blessed and we've never lost money on a deal, but we've had fear, fear has definitely paralyzed us where we've made a lot of mistakes in terms of what we could have and should have done on in deals and a lot of stuff that we've passed on because of fear too. Mm -hmm. So I would just, you know, I would recommend like, just try to overcome that fear and, and just do deals and make sure you've got your multiple exit strategies like Jim talked about. And again, like Jim said, don't worry about your entity structuring and your asset protection and all that stuff until you've got a couple deals. Like I think people get so paralyzed with that. We've got a few people that we've been mentoring personally, and they're super paralyzed with well, what ifs and what if this and what if that and what if that and oh, I got to set up my LLC and and my and my CRM and all these things. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just do the activity to find a deal. Focus on that. Put no energy anywhere else other than that, and you will be successful. Yes, that's exactly right. We try to tell everybody that. Some people hear it, some people don't. You know how it is. Yep. Yeah. Some people like us. I mean, in the beginning, I know you're you're probably out of time here, but in the beginning when we first started with you guys, I can't. I can't even remember how many times those words came out of your and Jeff's mouth, yeah. but like sometimes until you just get in there and you just do it yourself until you learn it, like you're, you could hear it so many times, but you won't understand it until you just do it yourself. And so 
Yeah. Yeah. Just do it. Just, just do, do it. it. Just night. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's, That's the good. best book ever. That's I know, right? That's a good one. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate your time here and all your words of wisdom um, for everybody watching at home. And no uh, we'll see you on the next uh, coaching call. All right. Hey. Thanks, Blair. See ya. All right. See you guys. Bye, Blair. Bye.